Chapter 8, Lesson 2 Continued Part 2 Colonists Join Together So setting up our Cornell notes, colonists join together. The Stamp Act, Congress showed the colonists, I'm sorry, the Stamp Act Congress showed that colonists could work together. But to do so, they would need new ways to share information. News traveled slowly in those days. It could take weeks for people to find out about events in other colonies. To speed information, the colonists formed committees of correspondence. Members of these committees started by corresponding with, or writing letters to, one another. So a letter writing committee. Then they used the mail to spread the news. In 1764, people in Boston formed a committee of correspondence in response to the Sugar Act. The next year, colonists in New York formed another committee. They wrote about important events such as New York's protest of the Stamp Act. In 1772, Samuel Adams asked leaders in Boston to begin a new committee of correspondence, and they agreed. The Boston Committee began writing to other cities and towns, asking them to protest British imperial policies, the laws and orders issued by the British government. Colonists soon spoke about the need for a committee of correspondence in every colony. Virginia formed a committee in 1773. The members wrote that all colonists should be much disturbed by various rumors and reports of proceedings tending to deprive them of their rights. The Virginia colonists then asked other colonies to start their own committees of correspondence to gain support for their cause and share news and information. All right, so this is a two-pager. Delivering the mail. And it shows um, why the mail took such a long time. So go ahead and check this out on pages 228 and 229 in your textbooks. Working as a group, many colonists tried to force Britain to take back the Stamp Act. They decided not to buy goods that were taxed. More and more people in the colonies began to boycott or refuse to buy British goods. Soon after the Stamp Act was passed, a group of colonists called the Sons of Liberty began working to stop it. No Stamp Act. This group took its name from a speech that was given in Parliament that called the colonists the Sons of Liberty. The Sons of Liberty captured several British officials who tried to collect the tax. They covered the officials in sticky tar <laughs> and dumped feathers on them. People in Britain had used this practice known as tarring and feathering to scare away tax collectors. Wow. Women played a role in resisting. They formed their own group known as the Daughters of Liberty. In Rhode Island, members of the group began spinning and weaving cloth for sale in place of British cloth. The cloth was so popular that the women chose a large place to make it, the city courthouse. By 1766, British merchants had lost a lot of money from the boycott. Sales of British goods fell by almost half in some colonies. More and more people in Britain spoke out against the Stamp Act. 
Soon after Benjamin Franklin spoke to Parliament, Parliament voted to repeal or take back the act. So what did colonists want to accomplish by forming committees of correspondence? The Boston Massacre. So put this in your Cornell notes. The Boston Massacre. March 5th, 1770. Boston, Massachusetts. Having British soldiers in their cities angered many colonists. They made fun of the soldiers' bright red uniform jackets, calling them lobsters and redcoats. Some of the soldiers became so angry they destroyed colonial property. The anger between the colonists and the British soldiers grew, and fights broke out more and more often. One of the worst fights took place in Boston on March 5, 1770, when a large crowd of angry colonists gathered near several British soldiers. The colonists shouted insults at the soldiers and began throwing rocks and snowballs at them. As the crowd moved forward, the soldiers opened fire. Three colonists were killed on the spot and two others died later. And some information about Boston here. Among the dead was an African-American sailor from Massachusetts named Crispus Attucks. Many people consider Crispus Attucks to be the first person killed in the fight for the colony's freedom. Paul Revere, a Boston silversmith who supported the colonists, made a picture of the shooting and titled it the Bloody Massacre. A massacre is the killing of many people who cannot defend themselves. The shooting in Boston soon became known as the Boston Massacre. What was the cause of the Boston Massacre? In summary, the Stamp Act angered many colonists because they believed they had a right to be represented, represented in any government that taxed them. Colonists began to work together to protest Britain's imperial policies. As anger between the colonists and Britain grew, fights broke out. Some of the worst fighting took place in Boston.